Hello and welcome to Cell Reviews. I'm reviewing Scorpion today and we're going to be asking what actually happened on the album and what the artist was possibly talking about. So without further ado, let us begin. A quick sequence of events that, that happened before this album. He has been running the game pretty much ever since his breakthrough uh, mixtape Best I Ever Had and his breakthrough tracks which was um, best i ever had as well as forever he has been pretty much on top take care pretty much propelled him to a commercial scene if you didn't know about that that about him um prior to this album release he got into an altercation with Pusha t on his track infrared where he he alluded to drake's ghostwriting allegations and um because of this drake didn't like that um by the way infrared is from Pusha t's album daytona if you, heard, if you haven't heard that make sure you go listen to it drake didn't like this he actually took it to the booth and dropped doppy freestyle now after doppy freestyle just he waited a couple of a couple of days then dropped the story of adidon the story of adidon is a track where Pusha T revealed that drake was a deadbeat dad he has a son that a porn star softcore porn star by the way if it wasn't any more controversial than that he also dropped um the artwork which was drake in blackface so now that's the context now so why is this important this is important because the album was set to be released on the 30th of june if i'm not mistaken and this beef happened end of may start of june he has basically had to redo and revise a lot of the work that he had already done into the album and this can change the messaging the original messaging that he was possibly going for the theme that he was possibly going for in this album this does have a massive impact so i felt it was important for you to know that before i dive right in okay so we're gonna look at the story of this album for the story this story is about a man who is frustrated with everything that's going on in his life he keeps talking about his accomplishments and he basically is tired of the constant dogging, um, questioning of his character, the, co the constant questioning of his content, whether it's legit or not. Everything that he despises, he basically talks about on his album. It was a double re disc release, which meant the hip hop side, there was side, side A was the hip hop side, and side B was the R&B side of the album. Side A was pretty much all about Drake and addressing a lot of issues, which I felt that this album wouldn't really wouldn't have been like that uh, um, without the additions, revisions that gone after. You can tell that some of the tracks were revised, such as Talk Up featuring Jay Z, the intro itself, Survival. Those tracks, Mob Ties, even you can even hear that those tracks were actually revised. Um, however like i said because of these revisions it became apparent that the original messaging was lost i think it was according to a track in side b which was march 14th i believe that has always been there and i believe he was going to come out of it with this revelation and he was always going to bring out um his son into it and always tell us about his son the single i'm upset pretty much does elude to that possibility of that happening because he did talk about sophie in not he didn't he didn't really mention the name of the porn star by the way the name of the porn star is sophie brusso he did talk about the porn star that pretty revealed in the story of adidon but it's something that you would only understand once you listen to march 14th this shows that he was always going to talk about it but not on the defensive as he was i personally felt like he was always going to be doing something more r&b focused in the track elevate where he said this summer i'm gonna be tweaking um this was always suggested to me that he was always gonna be trying something else but i really felt that because of this whole beef he might really leave hip-hop behind but i don't know he's been doing a lot of freestyles lately so we don't know i gave this album a 5.5 um, I'm going to explain why in the verdict. Okay, now I'm gonna go on to the lyrical content of this album. Oh uh, yeah, it wasn't lyrically rich, I would say. Not saying it was bad. It wasn't bad. I don't think Drake has never been a bad rapper. I think when you put when you put him in terms of rapping, he is amazing. He's phenomenal. 
However, from 2013, his sound has changed a lot, which is why personally I've stopped listening to Drake because I know what he can do and I know he's desynthesizing his music. I really came in with an open mind. I really, really wanted Drake to take me somewhere else and he didn't. This album was more story focused. It was more of addressing issues. It wasn't really made and i believe without these issues going on without him having to be on the defensive he would have really been lyrical i really believe this was the album um that would have redefined drake if he had done it on his terms and not really trying to react to what just happened so i mean when you look at tracks like sandra's rose for example this to me was the most lyrically potent track it's 10 out of 10 for me Listen to this. Two girls that I wrote like Indiana Jones, I make them hoes walk together like Amber Rose. <laughs> now, the two references there. Two girls, two girls that I wrote, I wrote like Indiana Jones. Roping used to be a terminology that was very famous in 2008, 2009 era. That's the era I grew up in. That's the, that's the era Drake also um, was making music in as well. And the term rope just means obviously you get a girl to come towards you and make them hoes walk together like Amber Rose. If you know about Amber Rose slot slot walk, <laughs> you would get this bar. That was that's funny. That's literal. But you don't see this every day with Drake. I, and I love this. I, I love the content. I'm the chosen one. Flowers never pick themselves. Listen, <sighs> lyrical onslaught. I think that was the most lyrical potent track. It was filled with metaphors. It was filled with, there was a lot in there that one can work with. And I gave it a 5.7 out of out of 7. I'm going to dissect the flow and style now. I, a lot, I like this flow. The flow of the album entirely. It represented the old Drake at times, especially the R&B side. I felt that was the old Drake. There was a good flow to it. There was a good continuity to it. I really liked the transition from the hip hop side to the R&B side by using More Than A Woman on the last track of the hip hop side. The only criticism I have of it is when he when he tried to use BK London chat, which is a, a, pla a show talking about relationships that is quite for, for pop popular. Um, it's not that popular, but it's quite popular in the UK. Um, so I like how he tried to tap into that, but the way he was using it to provide a meaning for what he was talking about, I got the meaning because I kind of have an idea of what the show is about. But for someone who doesn't actually know what the show is about, they're going to be disjointed. They're not going to understand what you're trying to say. Um, and I felt he missed the mark with that. Apart from that, it flowed well. I gave it a 3.8. I really love the use of samples on this on this on this album i felt and especially the the production it was very very tight i'm gonna get into that in the next segment which is the instrumentation the instrumentation the only problem i had with the instrumentation was the layering of the track um don't matter to me i think it was that's what it's called featuring michael jackson i didn't feel like michael jackson was brought in in in, in the first part that we hear michael jackson he wasn't brought in properly I, I he felt very forced to me it just didn't sit right for some reason it really didn't sit right i literally felt it could have literally nostalgia aside it was a good feature i think the the beat really captured the mm, it was good i'm not going to knock that however greg made it work but however it was very awkward um for the voice like um for the voice to really start off well on the track the way he did uh i didn't i personally didn't like that i gave it overall a 3.8 out of 5 and now my final verdict oh okay jesus um what do i say overall this album scored 18.7 out of 25 which meant 18.7 divided by 25 times about 100 which is 75 percent I personally believe he called this album Scorpion for it for the for the reason because I personally believe he was he was planning to leave a stinger. There's two reasons for him calling it Scorpion, and the first reason I think is because of the characteristics of what a scorpion is. A scorpion is very durable. It has that hard shell, that hard exterior, um, that it that is quite resilient to any attacking um predator, and it always has that that tail. To really sting you and really destroy you when he's ready that can apply to drake 
I think he has been very durable. 10 years is very, it's a very long time for anybody in hip hop to be, to be on top. Um, and I think even him going, he's going on Jay-Z's numbers now. He has gone platinum every single album since, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to correct this anyway in editing if I get it wrong, but <laughs> since Take Care, I think ever since that album, he's really been on platinum, 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 platinum. And this album gone platinum again on first day release. That's because of the beef. I don't think, I think he would have, would take a bit longer to get platinum. He still would have got platinum. I think it would have taken a bit longer than a day. However, I believe his brand is going down and he is starting to die. So back to my point though, in terms of Scorpion. He's durable. He's lasted for ten years. Um, he has. He's very resilient. He had fought off Meek Mill, who was really hot at the time. If you remember, he's, he dropped Dream Chases one and two, which were popping. So for this guy to come against you with uh, ghostwriting allegations, he handled him. He brushed him off. He also applied the eighth law of the fifteen of the 15 laws of war by robert green he applied that law with joe budden was to pick his battles now this was very very simple for him in my opinion joe budden was not really a guy that was up there in terms of reputation people may not have known the people from from his era the noughties will know who joe budden was because of pump it up of course they will know that he's a lyricist and they'll know that though he will be drake literally but he was like nope i'm resilient enough to take whatever attack he's got on me i'm just gonna move on now there is one characteristic that scorpion does have that drake has as well and that's the ability to not see very well he did not see kanye or Pusha T. any of those things happening to him did not see that coming did not see the diss track coming did not see the leaking coming and therefore like any scorpion they'll end up on the back of the uh, on on the back of them because they cannot see and because of drake being unable to see what was happening yeah I, I, yeah he's definitely a scorpion and and this album served that purpose he did not see what was coming it hit him right where it hurts and he has had to become defensive on his own piece of work also fun fact scorpions and operators they're quite defensive creatures anyway that's the end of my review stay tuned for some more reviews that are coming up We've got a lot planned. Have a good day. God bless.